That's strange. Is Brad here? Brad, come on. Make your way to the front here. Brad is a pastor. Uh, he's actually in the North Texas area. Uh, but he didn't come from Texas. He made his way finally to the homeland. And uh, we're grateful for that. Uh, but Brad is a pastor in uh, North Texas. I met him at a conference uh, a couple of months ago. And I want to share with you a work that has happened in Brad's life uh, that I'm proud of for him. Okay? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard to be proud of yourself, but it's easy for someone else to be proud for you. If you were to go to my office right now, and Mike made a little simple day with two points, and you've got to be able to count more than two, Mike, to be able to do what I'm going to say. And I said, you know, I want you to count how many Bibles are on my shelf. Just in my office back there, there are 63 Bibles that are on my shelf. And a lot of those Bibles are what we call study Bibles. And a study Bible, those of you who have one and don't realize you have one, is there's a line underneath the text, and there's like comments underneath, and there's statements at the side, and different things. We call those study Bibles. Let me show you how most study Bibles come into existence. They take ample amount of time and energy, and typically a seminary, a school, a college, or a very large church will gather a group of individuals, sometimes 20, 30, 70, or 100 people. They will assign them different sections of scripture and say, study your life away, tell us what you think, and they put it into a nice binder. I hold before you a, what I consider a modern phenomenon. And if you will notice, if you can read it, it says the Strand Study Bible. Now, I just introduced my friend Brad Strand to you. I will testify to you that on my bookshelf, and I'm a pretty ardent studier of Scripture, there are five, maybe six study Bibles that were compiled by one individual. In other words, they comprised their life of putting their knowledge and how God worked in their life into one volume. This individual seated in front of me, who's going to be at the back table in a moment, has spent 33, not years, 33,000 hours studying the things of God in the Bible. And in the process of time and providence and relationships that he has had, it has been recently published. He is here in Atlanta. Uh, he is making a tour of different venues. He's going to be on Family Net tomorrow, being interviewed on TV. He said, well, why would so much attention go to this? Because the last time somebody did this was over 30 years ago. This doesn't happen every day. Let me tell you why this doesn't happen every day. Because most ministers and most pastors and even most professors, it's not that they really don't have time to do it. It's they don't have the love to do it. And early in his ministry life, Brad formed a love for the things of God and studying Scripture. And you can tell this is an incredibly thick volume. His life ministry has been poured into this. We became instant friends at a conference a couple years ago. Here's the best news for you, though. The retail price for this bad boy is $150. Yeah, you got to pay for study Bible. But here's the great news. If you'll go back to that table back there, Brad will be there. There's some representatives from the publishing company. You can purchase it today for almost half price. They're running a special deal uh, for us in the Atlanta area. Let me encourage you to do something. I know you may come today and say, that's not what I came for today, not ready today. They've got promotional materials. They've got excerpts from the Bible. It's a wonderful resource. If you're a Sunday school teacher, if you're in BSF, women's Bible studies, men's Bible studies, it's always great not only to have a study Bible, but to know that this is so consistent from beginning to end because it's almost the life journey of him as Christ has been sharing things with him. I just want to encourage you to go by and check a look. Uh, he'll be signed up. You know, I was technically the first one to order this, right? And he didn't even sign it. So I want you to go back to the Brad. Come here. Come here. I want you to sign. I ordered the very first one. Anyone signed? So I want you to sign mine. Can you do that for me? I appreciate that. I'll meet you back there. I'll meet you back there. Okay. So, but I do want to encourage you to step back there and kind of look at the resource materials. If nothing else, just get the opportunity. I promise you that the odds in your lifetime of meeting another individual who systematically puts a study Bible together all by themselves is zip, zada, and not. It does not happen very often. So I want to encourage you to do that. Our weekly feed is coming up. Remember, it is about our baptism service that is tonight, 6 o'clock. Uh, to the best of our recollection, we have over 20 churches that are going to be participating. I know what some people are saying, but what if it rains? They're getting baptized. It'll be okay. Don't worry about it. We're doing it rain or shine. But here's one other thing you need to know, real importantly. If you're parked in our north parking lot, the, this north entrance over by the modular buildings, do us a favor. If you're going to go out to eat with somebody else, or if you're going out and you leave your car, would you please remove your car from that parking lot? Put it somewhere else. It doesn't matter. We want you to be at the baptism. We don't want your car. To be in the baptism. Because immediately after the service, we're going to go prepare that parking lot for the service tonight. So please do us that favor. I'll be in our first time guest reception in the library. Glad to see you there in a moment. Here's your weekly feed.